30 years ago, I was laying in my bed thinking about the meaning of life. I had just graduated from high school and I was en route to uh, an aeronautical university where I was to study to become a commercial pilot in the United States, uh, where I'm from. And, but I was thinking about life and, you know, my life was normal. It was, you know, nothing majorly strange <laughs> was going on. It was li living a normal life. But somehow inside of me there was a, uh, like a, a dissatisfaction, like, like a feeling that there was something more to life than I had been experiencing, some truth that is fundamental that would help my life be meaningful and, and, and with a purpose. And I, you know, when I was young, uh, my mom used to drag me to church, but I had done away with that long before because I never really connected with the environment there or, or for whatever reason. But in this moment, I was open, I was asking, I said, God, if you exist, please show me. I want to know what the truth is. I don't care what the truth is, but I want to know what it is so that I can walk on the path of that truth so my life can be meaningful. And if you exist, please show me. I want to know. It was a period of about two weeks, and I, I'm asking God this to, to, to reveal himself to me in this way. Okay, so it all culminated. I'm lying there in bed um, and just thinking about these things, and my thoughts turned toward Jesus. And I didn't understand what was going on exactly. Uh, there was no audible voice from heaven or something like this. But in my thoughts, the thought came to me, do you want to try Jesus? And I felt like this was from God somehow. And uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't really understand. But in that moment, I gave my life entirely to Jesus. I said, if this is truth, Jesus, if you are truth, yes, I want to follow you. I give you my life. I will follow you right now. And immediately when I did that with a full heart, towards God, everything changed in an instant. Um, the love, the presence of God, his, his very presence just filled me up entirely. And I, I was weeping tears of joy because I knew I had finally found the meaning of life, the purpose of my life, and that is to know God, to walk with God, to have a relationship with God. And so uh, a few months later, I find myself flying an airplane. I'm at the Aeronautical University and I'm doing my first solo flight, meaning I'm flying the plane for the first time by myself without my instructor sitting next to me. And I'm going around flying, having a good old time. And when I come down uh, to, to land the plane, uh, there's a malfunction on the nose gear. So when I touch the runway, it starts shaking uncontrollably. And all of a sudden the plane starts going like this. Uh, and goes up on one wheel at this point, and I'm fixing to crash that plane. I mean, the situation is out of control. And now the instructor had told me, who, uh, the instructor's not in the plane with me at the moment, but he had told me in times past, if, if ever we're flying and he's sitting next to me and I feel it's out of control, just say, your airplane, and he will take control of the plane and bring things the way they need to be. But my instructor was not in the plane with me. But thankfully, I knew God at this point. So what I did in that moment as I'm about to crash, I said, God, your airplane. <laughs> and um, I don't know how he got me back up in the sky. I, I really don't know, but I know that he did it. And so all I know is, next thing I know is we're, I'm going back up into the sky and I come around the second time for a landing, but this time I'm prepared for the nose wheel to start shaking. And so I'm able to deal with that and land the plane properly. Now, this just showed me that God's ability is beyond our ability. He can do things. When we're walking with God, He wants to be involved in such a way that the things we can't handle, the things we can't do, sometimes life throws us a real curveball or a real difficult situation. With God, as we call out to Him and have faith that He's able to change things, it releases Him to do exactly that. And that's what happened in the situation. And so I realized, you know, God was speaking to me in this time, not just through that situation, but over this time period that um, he, he rather has another plan for me. And it's not to fly airplanes. <laughs> it is actually to, to share God with people. In other words, to help people understand how they can know God, how they can walk God, how they can experience all that he has for them. And so... This divine interaction totally puts us on a different 
life experience and, and it's been my passion for the last 28 years. So from that point, I, uh, I, I went to, actually I went to a, a Bible school for a while there, but then I, I went into uh, nations in Asia and Europe, Eastern Europe mainly, now in Africa, doing exactly that in full-time ministry and that's my passion and I, I would not rather do anything else. And so, you know, in this process, God has, you know, when I was in Romania and I was en route to Asia, I was thinking, boy, Lord, I, I could really use a wife. <laughs> I really would like a wife, a godly wife, not just anybody and any wife. Um, and uh, God miraculously. So I was en route to Asia and my wife, uh, who, who wasn't my wife yet, she was in Africa here, but God put us together in, in such a way that only he could. If it, in other words, if it, I, I don't have time to explain it right now, but if it wasn't for God, that wouldn't have happened. So just another uh, thing that, that God did to show he is able to put people together, relationships, uh, even beyond human concoction and, and, and methods and all of that. And so um, I just I want to share another way that, uh, that God leads and guides. And we were in um, Poland. So my wife is from Poland. Our son was born in Asia, a nation in Asia. Our daughter was born in Romania, and our youngest daughter was born uh, in Pretoria in South Africa. So anyway, we were at a certain point in Poland, and God was saying, oh, I want you guys to come back to South Africa. And um, we were praying about where to come in South Africa. And God gave me a dream, actually a vision in a dream. And in this dream, there was a map I saw and different sections of a location. And there was a certain area outlined in a bright green. And when I woke up, I understood that God was highlighting where we need to go in South Africa. But, but that map, I didn't recognize. I didn't know where that was. And so I was online searching, okay, where is this place? And, I, and then I found myself on Wikipedia in, in um, Johannesburg suburbs map. And I realized, oh, there's that section that was outlined in bright green. And so we are to come to Johannesburg. And so God led us exactly where to come, probably because we wouldn't have chosen to come here to Johannesburg otherwise. And sometimes God does that. But, but so, so we teach seminars on understanding our dreams because throughout the Bible, God has used uh, the method of speaking through dreams to people and, and he says you will dream dreams and um, you know Daniel and Joseph they they rose to a place of political prominence in the nations because of their ability to uh, to 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 say to the the political leaders of the time what God is saying through these dreams and what they mean and so God wants us to understand our dreams it's one of the ways he speaks to us so we teach seminars on this and people really um, begin to understand that they, they uh, the wonder of God speaking in this way because the mind is not involved and, and thinking, it just comes. And, and, and so God has used that in our life to get us exactly where we are here. And he's used dreams to prepare us um, for transitions, like we were staying in one location and the landlord where we were staying, um, my wife had a dream the night before. Okay, one evening she had the dream that the landlord came and said, you know, uh, he needs the house for his daughter and, and such. And so the very next morning, the landlord asks to speak with us, but we knew what he was going to say. So we were prepared and we understood how God was leading through the situation. And so, so imagine if, every, if we as believers, we would all learn how to hear God's voice and he could give us revelation and guidance in, in life, in business, in in, in educational realms, political realms, and, and, and be the people of influence God has destined us to be. The Great Commission Jesus gave us, he said, um, I want you to disciple nations. So it's more than just a personal one-on-one -on -one thing. Obviously, nations is made up of individuals, so, but it's more than that. God wants us to influence nations. And in fact, the word he used for church, the, the body of believers, um, it was translated from a word Jesus used called the ecclesia. And that's translated as ch the church, the people, the believers uh, in the New Testament. And that was not a religious word that Jesus used. Uh, that word, uh, the Greeks used the word ecclesia to describe their um, 
um, citizens who were involved in the political process and decision making in the nation there. And, and the Romans used that to describe a, a group of people that they would send out into another nation to bring the ways of Rome into that nation. And they were the official emissaries. If somebody did something to those people, they would have to answer to Rome because those even two or three, whoever they were that were sent out by Rome were ambassadors or emissaries. And so we can see the connection, the kingdom of God, that uh, Jesus is, is the, the, the head of, you know, um, the government is on his shoulders, the scripture says. So we are to bring the ways of heaven, the ways of God into the ways of earth and with God's authority and power backing us up. And so if we as believers would understand that ministry is not just something that happens in a religious building on a Sunday morning, um, but it is what we do to influence people, organizations, our community, the nation, our place of business, or whatever the case may be. It's our bringing the ways of heaven, like Jesus prayed in Matthew 6, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we bring the ways of God into a, uh, an organization and a situation, maybe we're not blat openly just saying the name of Jesus um, if it's not a situation where we can do that, but we bring the ways and people see the revelation, they see the wisdom, which we know is flowing from God, but then that, that gives uh, the believer a place of influence within that environment, and then that believer can start to uh, bring these ways of heaven into the ways of earth and we God needs believers he needs believers who are high in politics education family departments uh, news media um, the entertainment industry policemen uh, whatever he needs believers to 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 be an influence for the kingdom of heaven and bring the ways of God into into the ways uh, of earth um, and, and in the structures that we have. And it is in this way that God's supernaturalness can bring us to a place of influence beyond human ability as we bring the solutions to the problems of this world um, that is needed. You know, the Bible is full of, of prophecies and historical, at this point in time, historical facts, but it was prophesied the rise and fall of nations and, you know, current events that are happening now is right there in Bible prophecy and, and things that will happen in this world. And, and God was uh, revealing some of these things through dreams and things before coming to South Africa. And so we also, those are some seminars that we do teaching on Bible prophecy and what the Bible says about these times in which we're living and, and what's to come. And, um, you know, so because God wants to inject himself through the believers into every situation and he wants us to know what's going on and he wants to empower us supernaturally by his spirit which brings me to another topic of divine healing and deliverance you know God can change Jesus was going around throughout scripture uh, throughout the New Testament healing people delivering people from demonic influences and all of these things and and we've seen this we've seen as we pray people healed from stage four cancer uh, I've laid my hands on people where God uh, takes their vertebrae in their spine and puts it back into place because it was out of place from a, a car accident and they walk away instantly healed and and there's a realm of operating in the power and the authority of God's kingdom as his ambassadors that Jesus said is for every believer. He said believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we do seminars on that on divine healing and, and because our passion is really to equip people to know how to walk with God including in the ways which are beyond human ability that, that a lot of believers just aren't familiar with. And so this, this, uh, this really is our um, passion. Imagine if believers would rise up in this kind of godly authority and godly revelation with the Spirit of God guiding them to solve the, the solutions in South Africa, in, the, in nations, in communities. And, and imagine if believers really walked with God to that degree, all, all believers. What would be the result? This is my challenge. This is our challenge to the believers and to anybody. Let's live a life of significance where God has destined us to influence, to be people of influence and impact uh, this nation in which we live. The goal of our teaching and, and um, 
seminars and, and is that we want every believer to be empowered with all that God has for us. In Ephesians 4, it says that um, until we all come to the unity of the faith and uh, the knowledge of God and the, f- and the fullness of Christ. In other words, everything Jesus was doing, he said, is for those who believe in him as well. He said, um, those who believe in my name will do what I'm doing and even greater, he said. So, you know, there is a, a world that is waiting for us to get serious with God. And so I want to leave you with this challenge. Um, if you don't know God, ask him to reveal himself to you. That's what I did. All it takes is a sincere, open heart. Say, God, show me what is truth. He will answer you. Do you know God? I challenge you to give all your life to him. Get on your knees and say, God, I'm yours. Any way you want to use me, I want to know you and walk with you in a deeper way than ever before. Here I am. Lead and guide me and see what God does.